monitoring and how the environment of the pharmaceutical industry specifically the sterile area is monitored and what are the different sources of contamination and the personal training and uh, their particular areas and personal and surface monitoring and how personal can be monitored and how the surface uh, and the areas can be monitored uh, using different techniques that is the uh, title of the today lecture Dear student, the uh, main objective of this lecture is to learn about the sterile products related to the following topics. That is introduction to environmental monitoring, sources of contamination that I have already told you, the different sources of contamination and how the professionals and the workers are trained in their particular areas and the sterile products are prepared in the pharmaceutical industries and uh, major components of the environmental monitoring and air control and microbiological air testing method how air is controlled and how microbiological uh, air is tested and the pharmaceutical industries how the uh, air samples are taken and what are the different methods for that particular microbiological air testing and finally in this lecture we will discuss the personal monitoring and as well as the surface monitoring dear students after the completion of this lecture you will be able to know about the environmental monitoring the major components of environmental monitoring the air control and the different testing method for the air control uh, method for the air microbiological testing of the air and the personal and surface monitoring and the pharmaceutical industry but our focus will be on the sterile area as well dear student first of all i would like to start from the environmental monitoring that uh, what is meant by environmental monitoring and what is the importance of the environmental monitoring and the pharmaceutical industry specifically in the sterile area environmental monitoring the effective environmental control and the monitoring of the environment both physical environmental control and biological environmental control is essential and it is mandatory it is of prime importance that effectively we will control the environment either of the physical or biological environment in the specific area and environmental monitoring describes the processes and activities that need to take place to characterize and monitor the quality of the environment suppose i am interested to monitor the environment by this i mean that the various processes and activities that is necessary uh, to identify and to characterize and to evaluate the quality of the environment which are uh, under test or which is uh, desirous to be monitored it is a process which provides monitoring uh, in simple words we can say that uh, environmental monitoring is a process which involves and provides the monitoring testing and feedback to the microbiological quality levels and the aseptic environment if i say that i am uh, going to evaluate and to monitor the particular area suppose i am saying that it is a class area that i will evaluate i will monitor i will test the particular area that is the class area or class 100 area and i will uh, test it and uh, will also uh, feedback about that uh, particular area that is the class area uh, by the testing and monitoring of the microbiological quality level that i have told you that the different colony farming unit and uh, diameter of the particular colony farming unit for 4 hours and uh, different uh, 
particles and having the particular size of dead particle I will test and I will monitor and uh, then I will uh, feedback on that particular area that it is a septic environment that is free from viable microorganism that is free from the physical and biological contaminants or not. Next is sources of contamination. There are different sources of contamination in the previous lecture in which I have told, told you about the different contaminants and uh, the different contaminants I have told you that physical contamination or the chemical contamination or biological contamination may occur in the pharmaceutical industries and uh, these are the three main types of contaminants which are uh, possible uh, in the pharmaceutical industries and uh, these three types of the uh, contaminants should be avoided in particular area. Most of the contamination can come from the air as I have told you in the previous lecture that air, how we will minimize, how we will control the airborne contamination and in that particular lecture I have told you about the personal bone contaminant and uh, different strategies for the controlling the airborne as well as the personal bone contaminants and the pharmaceutical industry. There will be some parts of the uh, equipment that is a uh, tearing and wearing problem and the particular industry the equipment can also become the uh, parts of the equipment and uh, that uh, disintegration or fragmentation parts can become part of the product and by this way the uh, particular formulation or the product can be contaminated. Cleaning agents, sometimes the cleaning agent that I have told you in the previous lecture that water should be also tested, the cleaning should be done, effective cleaning method should be evaluated and uh, the effective disinfectant should be uh, properly uh, cleaning should be done uh, using the disinfectants containers and sometimes the containers are not wet cleaned and they cause a contamination the fungal growth the bacteria growth may occur if the container is not uh, properly cleaned and properly checked for the previous batches and the previous batches uh, stresses amount or any other raw material that may be become part of the uh, new formulation and by this way the container if it is not uh, properly cleaned and the standard operating procedure for that cleaning is not followed and by this way contamination may occur and uh, that become part of the product water as well as the compressed gases among other things uh, these are also the sources of contamination and the product Sound monitoring required understanding the various stringent regulatory specification. Uh, there is a close determination and a close monitoring, and we should understand about the various regulatory specification and uh, standard operating procedure by various organizations, such as you know about the FDA, that is the Food and Drug Administration. ISO that is international standard organization if you visit the pharmaceutical industry and uh, in the food industry you can see that that is FDA approved the specific cosmetics uh, or any other products that is uh, mostly of the FDA approved and sometimes you can see that ISO recognized and uh, on the particular display of the pharmaceutical industry that is or different ISO designations are there uh, that is uh, ISO stand for international standard organization and uh, sometimes you can see that monitoring and contamination controls are by the European Union and uh, sometimes you can see that it is uh, followed uh, for specification uh, that is mentioned in the United States pharmacopoeia or USP specifications are followed for monitoring and understanding the various strengthening uh, stringent regulatory condition and uh, our country we can say that uh, sometimes we can follow uh, the rules and regulations uh, that is uh, 
approved by the DRAP, that is the DRAP, Drug Regulatory Authority of Pakistan, uh, sometimes the Ministry of Health, that is MOH Pakistan, and uh, some other international organization that I have told you about, the FDA approved our uh, specification, the International Standard Organization, or uh, the European uh, specification, our United States Pharmacopoeia specification, the relevant specification, the regulatory uh, bodies, uh, monitoring methods are followed, or their specification should be followed uh, in order to uh, bring about uh, the possible ways to control the contamination and for controlling and monitoring. Uh, these regulatory specifications are followed. Next is personal training that uh, what is uh, the different uh, person that working in the pharmaceutical industries and specifically in the sterile area that how the operators and the professionals and uh, different employees that working either the qualified or any other uh, relevant personnel that is working in the sterile area that should be properly trained and uh, they should know all about the procedure and they should know a good understanding to follow the procedure and their uh, importance as well. All operators should be trained and qualified on various procedures. If I say that a microbiological section, the qualified person should be there, and if I say that in the production department, the qualified person is a pharmacist are working, and they should be properly trained about every process, every procedure relevant to their production, and uh, including the governing and their dressing with a good understanding of the procedures. Uh, that is the standard operating procedure for every step and every process should be followed and uh, operators as well as the qualified person should be properly trained. Their importance in aseptic manufacturing operation, they, they should follow the standard operating procedure while they are working in the aseptic manufacturing operation and the impact of risk to the quality for not following these procedures and the person or the operators or the qualified person should be properly trained and they should know about the impact or the results or consequences if they are not following the standard operating procedure and uh, the septic manufacturing operations and how the process will be affected, how the product will be affected, how the quality that we are claiming will be affected and there will be a risk if uh, they not follow the standard operating procedure. And for example, uh, personal training can include septic techniques, uh, cleaning, uh, clean room behavior, microbiology, hygiene, patient safety hazard due to non-steroid drug. Uh, these are the some examples that the personal training should be necessary uh, regarding the septic technique, they should be properly trained and the clean behavior, they should be properly trained as well as they have a sound knowledge about the microbiology and how the microbiology affect the product and how the uh, impact of the uh, risk of the quality of the product. Uh, if they are not following according to hygiene, their hygiene should be followed. If they are not follow the hygiene and hygienic condition, an unhygienic environment will be created in that particular area and uh, what is the patient safety hazard and due to non-sterile drugs uh, we are claiming that it is the sterile drug and uh, there will be no sterility if we are not following the personal training is not properly done and uh, they should know about everything at every impact and every aspect of the uh, product not from the quality but as well as from any other aspect related to the stability of the formulation and of the operation as well as and specific written procedures on manufacturing uh, operation remember that in pharmaceutical industries for each and every step and every process there are valid procedures the valid uh, standard operating procedures that should be followed for every each and every step starting from the initial entry to the final product packaging and uh, the storage as well 
and the pharmaceutical industry. These are uh, the different uh, personal training related problems that I've told you that the personal training should involve uh, these factors that should be involved and that uh, particular areas uh, which is also termed as the personal training uh, that I have told you in the earlier there are some other example including uh, person should be trained about the aseptic technique if they are following aseptic technique uh, that I have told you about the aseptic and the time sterilization if they are following these procedures if they are properly followed then there will be less chances of decontamination if they are uh, taking the sample for environmental monitoring and they are using the aseptic technique then our testing method or procedure or result will be valid and verified uh, and so on uh, the other aspect uh, example uh, that I have told you in the previous as well. For general techniques and operations and clean rooms emphasis should be placed on contacting sterile material and how we will uh, contact the sterile material and uh, it should be contacted with sterile instrument only if uh, we contact it uh, without using the sterile in instrument uh, then uh, there will be chances of decontamination and the product will be no more sterile uh, during the testing as well as during any processing. We should follow this uh, procedure uh, in order to avoid uh, direct contact of the sterile products. The container, the closure or the critical surfaces will go on or glow. We should touch with the sterile instrument or the sterile equipment using that one rather than the uh, direct contact or rather than the critical surfaces with the gown or the gloves which we have already taken. You can see the major components of environmental monitoring. Uh, there are different types of components. Uh, you can see in the table uh, that I mentioned a type uh, that is the physical, microbiological and personal and uh, surfaces uh, including the product contact, the floors, walls and equipment. Uh, these are the surfaces and the component and the physical that is a particle that is the active component of the physical type and uh, differential pressures, positive pressure from a critical area to adjacent area from 10 to 15 Pascal. Uh, there should be the difference between the two adjacent areas. Suppose I am going to say that uh, class A area and class B area, the difference between these class A and B area should be uh, the difference that is the differential pressure uh, the 10 to 15 Pascal should be the difference. Of course I say that in the class A area is uh, the pressure is 40 Pascal uh, then in the class B area uh, there, that will be uh, less than uh, 40 minus 10 or 40 minus 15 Pascal uh, 40 minus 10 that is 30 and 40 minus 15 that becomes 25 Pascal it should be 25 of Pascal 30 uh, 25 to 30 Pascal and in the class area that is a highly critical area the most sure area the positive pressure should be more as compared to the class B area and the difference should be uh, 10 to 15 Pascal from the adjacent area uh, to the A uh, adjacent is B and uh, to the B adjacent is C and uh, to the C adjacent area is class D area. Air changes that uh, physical controlling method, the major component monitoring method that air changes is per area unidirectional airflow that is followed in the sterile area as compared to any other areas in order to minimize the contamination and temperature and relative humidity should be also controlled. If you say the purpose of the particles, quality of environment is evaluated and root cause analysis for source of contamination. If we uh, take the physical, uh, the particle that is the active particle and the area, we will uh, check the quality of the environment. The purpose of this is uh, not only the quality but also the root cause analysis for the source of contamination as well. The second one that is the differential pressure that I have told you that uh, between the two adjacent areas that is a critical area to adjacent area critical area that is a highly critical area or most critical area 
plus a to plus b that is 10 to 15 pascal uh, from b to c that is also difference should be uh, differential pressure should be 10 to 15 pascal what is the purpose of this one uh, to prevent the entry of contaminants and the particle to the clean area that i have told you in detail that what is meant by the positive pressure and why the positive pressure is maintained and what is the importance of the positive pressure development and the particular area the next i have told you about uh, the air changes as per area that is unidirectional airflow uh, in order to maintain the quality of the environment the air changes in the particular area should be maintained unidirectional and one directional airflow should be uh, followed or rather than the multidirectional or two directional or bidirectional as well uh, because to maintain the quality of the environment in the particular steel area unidirectional air changes flow as uh, exercise it should be followed and uh, the last one in the physical type that is the temperature and relative humidity the personal comfort that is the uh, uncomfortable level cause generation of particle if i say temperature is more temperature is within not the limit and relative humidity is not within the limit not only the products uh, specification the product requirement for the specific area specific temperature and relative humidity is there and uh, for the decreasing the temperature uh, there is a HVAC system that is heating ventilation and uh, air conditioning system that is automatically installed in the pharmaceutical industries uh, wherever necessary temperature humidity and ventilation is controlled the second one that is the microbiological uh, that I have told you about the air that is active passive air and the purpose of this air is active or passive air microbiological control is uh, to maintain the quality of environment and root cause analysis of the source of contamination. The third type that is personal uh, glues, glues, gowns, hair, nails, personal hygiene and uh, th these are the components of the personal that uh, what uh, i have told you in the previous lecture about the personal contamination uh, the different contaminant possible contamination should be uh, possible contamination as on the gloves uh, the personal viewer and the gowns uh, and hair and nails and personal hygiene uh, these are the component of the personal environmental monitoring we should check about these if you check these and there is no uh, gloves contaminants on that one and gowns hair and nails and personal hygiene and uh, the main uh, purpose of this checking is to uh, control about the contamination uh, risk from person or personal contamination and aseptic techniques and practices are followed or not the last one that is the surfaces and the product contact and floors walls and equipment and uh, the component of this one is surfaces swabs and touch plates and effectiveness of the purpose of this one is to effectiveness to, uh, of the uh, aseptic technique cleaning and disinfection of area and equipment uh, by the surface swabs test and by the touch plate test uh, we can check this one that is the surfaces the product contact as a floor swabs and the equipment should be checked by using this one Next is the topic of air control that I have told you in the previous as well as but some additional that blowers are also preferred and uh, what is the role of the blower. Air control should be done by using a uh, HEPA filter that is high efficiency particulate air filter and class of air filter which meet a minimum performance level of 99.97% on 3 microns efficiency that is the only filter that is HEPA filter. Uh, that having the potential of 99% 99.97% potential to control the particles that is 0.3 micron or larger than 0.3 micron uh, that is uh, the efficiency in the clean room market HEPA uh, is uh, normally uh, rated as 99.99% blowers uh, should be installed and the area ventilation system the air ventilation system should be also control in order to control the air the clean air is normally distributed to the required areas by means of metal and uh, by using the ducts and uh, these ducts are made up of the preferably stainless steel 
and uh, I have told you in the previous week lectures that uh, the stainless steel is why the stainless steel is used uh, and uh, there are some problems in the cleaning of the stainless steel uh, that is a stainless steel duct that is installed for the uh, blowing or ventilation system and uh, in order to avoid this problem the free filters are installed in order to uh, minimize the contamination chances and uh, the cleaning difficulties of that particular duct as well. Next is the uh, microbiological testing of air. Uh, there are two different methods for uh, microbiological testing of air. The first one is termed as sedimentation method and the second one is termed as impaction method. The principle involved in the sedimentation method as the name indicates uh, the sedimentation, weight will be involved. The principle involved is a gravitational fallout in a given time and a given area and uh, irregularities and counts due to wild air currents and the physical movement of personnel etc are checked and uh, these are noted if sedimentation is not uh, it is irregular it means that uh, the for sedimentation of the air that is uh, under the influence of gravity or under the influence of gravitational force uh, that is uh, affected by the wild air uh, counts irregularities or physical movements of the personal as well. By this way we can check the microbiological testing of air. The second method that is termed is infection uh, method and this method different types of air samplers are available like the thread samplers that is used for the air sampling and sieve sample <coughs> that is the sieve sampler and uh, centrifugal sampler. These are the three types of the air sampler and uh, these different types of air samplers are used uh, for the impaction method and uh, after taking the air sample using uh, one of these air samplers including a set clad samplers or uh, uh, sieve samplers or the centrifugal samplers the particles in air that is impacted onto the medium uh, that is already uh, the medium plates are provided and they are sterilized and then the air is impacted on that particular medium of the plates by the application of electrical or mechanical forces and by this way if the growth is there it means that there is uh, the air is contaminated it is uh, uh, it is tested for the contamination next is personal monitoring that how we will check the person in the particular area how we will check the person and the professional, either the worker or the operators or the qualified person. We should check, the, we should monitor the person. The person or the personal are the biggest or the largest stress factor and a septic manufacturing process. Uh, it is a risk uh, by the person, it is the largest one factor. And during each session, gloves and gowns are periodically sampled, which is uh, weird by the person working in that particular area and it should be monitored for aerobic bacteria it should be monitored not only for the aerobic bacteria for all, as also for the yeast and fungi with a need to monitor anaerobic bacteria particularly uh, propion bacterium acnes apicultative anaerobes which is a part of the skin number four and uh, the chances of that particular apicultative anaerobes uh, there and it, we should uh, monitor that one and uh, not only that one but also aerobic one and yeast and fungi and uh, the specifically uh, that is on the skin the part of the skin flora normal flora and uh, it has been isolated from the manufacturing environment it should be checked uh, for uh, that particular person should be checked for uh, not only for the bacteria as well as the yeast and fungi and uh, specifically I told you about the skin normal flora and uh, the picultato anaerobe uh, that is the uh, particular the uh, propiano bacterium acnes. Personal health monitoring that I told you in previous lecture that the person should be checked for the uh, medical examination entirely and the medical factor certificate should be there and uh, he should be monitored not only for the medical fitness if he is ill, he is wounded or with the open wound or any allergic condition that I have told you 
during the previous lecture that uh, how we will control the personal bone contamination and the personal monitoring should be done uh, by checking the personal health and uh, at medical examination the medical examination of that particular person that is working in the areas and is required for those working and aseptic manufacturing processes as well as any other areas and uh, normal flora from these persons particularly palm nails hands hair etc may be useful uh, during investigation to find out the sources of contamination if a person has an unhygienic condition and a person uh, hairs are not cleaned and hands are not cleaned there are chances of the uh, contamination and uh, it should be useful for the investigation by the sources of because in order to find out in order to investigate about the sources of contamination that become the risk of the uh, problem of the particular areas the person should be properly monitored not only for the health monitoring but also for the uh, medical and physical examination the next one is the surface monitoring that how we will uh, check the surface monitoring the surface uh, the surface can monitor that i have told you uh, about uh, the surface monitoring uh, you can see in the table the last one that is the surfaces that is uh, the surfaces that is the product contact the flows walls equipment uh, this is the type of surfaces uh, these surfaces should be checked and the components of this one is uh, surface web swabs and uh, touch plates should be done uh, you can see uh, the samples from surfaces by touch plates the plates are taken and uh, these are sterile and uh, swabs are surface swabs are taken and these are touches with that particular surface uh, which are we are we are interested to uh, monitor the surfaces that particular surfaces are touched with the plates uh, surface swabs uh, are monitored by viable microscope microorganism or microbes to evaluate the effectiveness of operation and cleaning uh, if we have cleaned a particular area or the surface we should check it for the uh, touching for the plates as well as for the or any other suitable method that is the surface web to monitor the viable microbes and check the operation the cleaning and uh, disinfection procedure Critical surfaces uh, that is coming in contact with the sterile product should remain sterile throughout an operation. And uh, this is the checking of surface monitoring. That's how we will check the surface uh, by using uh, these uh, different techniques. And references uh, you can see. Uh, you can consult that is Lightman, Leberman, uh, 2017, uh, entitled the book, uh, titled Pharmaceutical Dosage Pump, Parental Medication and uh, you can consult this one as well as the CAPTA uh, role of environmental monitoring and microbiological testing during manufacture of sterile drugs and biologics uh, that is a review paper that is uh, published in 2014 and uh, 17 uh, sec that is uh, issue and volume and pages consulted that is uh, the pages are 46 to 55 and that particular paper that is by uh, author Gupta R and it is published in 2014 it is a review paper uh, that is American Pharmaceutical Review as a title of the journal and the title of the paper is uh, that one uh, just like the uh, title of the book that is uh, uh, the title of the paper as well That is all about the uh, today uh, lecture. Uh, inshallah, we will we will discuss in the uh, Google Meet session on the prescribed time according to timetable as well. In case of any problem, you can ask over there as well. We will discuss in detail. Uh, let's uh, discuss a little view of the today lecture. That's what he, we have discussed in the today lecture. Uh, today lecture that is lecture 14. Uh, that is the second lecture of the seventh week. Entitled environmental monitoring and sources of contamination. 
personal training, personal and surface is monitoring. Uh, that is the title of the 14th lecture and that lecture we will discuss these uh, topics the objective that I have told you earlier about the title the students you will know about the uh, for learn about the uh, survival product related to the topic that I have told you and that uh, particular title and learning out outcomes after the completion of this lecture you will learn about uh, that particular topic that is in objectives. Dear students, I have told you about the environmental monitoring, what is meant by ad uh, and uh, as you have, I have told you and it is mentioned in the slide number 5 and sources of contamination, uh, what are the different sources of contamination in the sterile area and uh, what are the different specifications which should be followed for the sound monitoring for a critical monitoring and close determination and understanding about uh, the sources of contamination. After that, I have told you about the personal training that uh, which type of uh, training should be uh, given to the qualified person or uh, the operator should be properly trained. And uh, the examples of the personal training uh, regarding the septic technique, clean them, uh, clean room behavior microbiology, by gene, patient safety, hazard and uh, specific written procedure and uh, personal training should be done regarding uh, the techniques as well as operation in the clean room, or clean room as well. After that I have told you about the major components of the environmental monitoring and the different types including the physical, microbiological and uh, personal as well as the surfaces and the surfaces include product contacts, flows, walls and equipment. I have told you about the components and the purpose of uh, these uh, major components and uh, the different types of the uh, components of the environmental monitoring. After that I have uh, discussed in detail about the air control that we have discussed in the previous lecture as well as that uh, what is uh, the role of air control and uh, the blowers are there and uh, I have told you about the HEPA filter that we have mentioned in the previous lecture more than once as well. After that I have told you about the microbiological testing of air. There are two different methods, sedimentation method, infection method and uh, sedimentation method involves the basic principle of the gravitational uh, that is an effect five time in a given area and infection methods uh, I've told you about the different air samples uh, samplers including the slit sampler, sieve sampler and the uh, centrifugal sample. The question way that uh, enlarge the different types of air samplers your suitable answer should be uh, that one, there are three types, three types of the uh, air samplers, that is the uh, slat samplers, sieve samplers and uh, centrifugal samplers. And uh, what is the purpose of these samplers? These are the air samplers and uh, air sample is taken by using uh, either of the samples, uh, air samplers. Personal monitoring that how personal is monitored for uh, contamination and uh, in the particular area, and uh, I've told you in detail about that. And it's uh, personal health money should be monitored, and medical examination should be done, and non flora should be checked, uh, particularly from nails, from hands, hairs, and uh, in order to uh, useful. It is useful for the uh, sources of contamination and uh, during the investigation of the area surface monitoring should be done and uh, using the touch plates or the surface swab should be monitored for viable microorganism in order to uh, evaluate and to check the cross check about the effect effectiveness of the operations, the cleaning operation and inner operation or disinfection operation if we uh, operate in a particular area and we will check the surface and we will uh, check about the cleaning that the cleaning is valid or not or uh, we have uh, used the disinfectant and uh, the proper areas or the proper surfaces uh, that is properly disinfected or not we should uh, check or evaluate 
the efficacy of the disinfection procedures and uh, finally I have told you about the uh, references, they told about different references which we have considered uh, for the preparation of this topic. Uh, thank you all for your attention. Uh, we will discuss in detail uh, about uh, this lecture as well as on the Google Meet. Thank you all for your attention. You can search Simon uh, like this one, but uh, I have checked you that uh, you follow. You can consult uh, the topic over there as well on the portal. If you open the portal by using your ID, you can access to the portal and uh, you will find uh, the lecture uh, that is the handout as well as the detail and uh, similarly uh, the voice over ppt or audio video over ppt which is uh, just I prepared for you and uh, you can consult this topic as well on the check your portal and this is the handout you can see lecture 14 and uh, this is the detail and moreover its uh, ppt will be uploaded uh, that is audio video over ppt if you have mass uh, lecture or in advance, you can start over there. It is uh, all about the uh, tutorial topic. 
if someone missed uh, during uh, the class or uh, someone having problems, you can consult this lecture uh, through access to the online portal as well. We are using the set of a lecture that you have missed. Thank you all for your attention.